Stay tuned for breaking news from Sierra Space at the end of this video that was released only a few moments before I published this content. And also please subscribe to Sierra Space's YouTube channel and follow their ongoing developments as we prepare to build the next space station. And then continue on up to space. No, I did not just mute the volume on that Blue Origin broadcast. Things went eerily quiet as this amazing development took place shortly after liftoff with New Shepard. All of us have probably heard about it by this time. There isn't a great deal of explanation as of yet as to what took place, why the anomaly happened. All that we know is the booster failed, the booster then later crashed, and the new New Shepard capsule executed what appears to have been a perfect abort. So things went very well for Blue Origin in terms of a demonstration of the effectiveness of their abort system, but this was also a very good development for Blue Origin in terms of just how lucky it was that this particular incident happened on this mission. Because for the first time in more than half a dozen missions, Blue Origin was not not carrying anybody on board this capsule. So although Blue Origin definitely has some damage control to do, it would have been far worse if there had actually been people on board. But why is this the case? I mean, it worked, right? Anybody on board should have survived, right? Well, we can't be too certain of that. Hello, YouTube. I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... So once again, here's a brief review. At approximately one minute and five seconds, there was an anomaly with the booster and the capsule took off, firing its Aerojet Rocketdyne solid rocket booster, and off it went, climbing an estimated 5,000 feet in five seconds. In general, abort system solid rocket motors are designed to fire for about 5 seconds, therefore subjecting the crew to high g-forces for as short of as time as possible while still escaping from the effects of a booster explosion or some other kind of anomaly. So it achieved an altitude of 37,345 feet, and then down it came, and man did it start plummeting. As you can see right here. Um, this is something that would have been, frankly, quite terrifying. Would have subjected the passengers to far greater g-forces than the most exciting roller coaster out there, and quite possibly could have caused some blackouts. Now, in defense of any sort of abort system, not just Blue Origin, the passengers are placed on their backs, essentially, during a launch process. This distributes the effect of g force forces on the body to minimize how bad the problems can be from going through those kinds of g-forces. By the way, probably looking at somewhere between 8 and 9 g's that the passengers would have been subjected to during this time frame. Now look, traditionally I'm very hard on Blue Origin and therefore I think a number of their employees may not be terribly fond of me either. By the way, this is from one of my Twitter followers. This is beyond hilarious. But anyway, I'm not going to be terribly hard on them in this particular video because we can expect these kinds of things to happen, especially with a rocket that still is relatively new. New Shepard has actually been extremely successful up to this point. It almost flawless, really. And even the abort appeared to be flawless. The rocket engine performed as expected. The drogue chutes opened. The main chutes opened. The descent was controlled and fairly gentle. And there was some debate as to whether or not the retro boosters fired at the last moment, as Blue Origin claimed. And I'm here to assure you that they did indeed fire. And the reason that I 
I believe this, is you're going to see a huge cloud of dust erupt right there. That's something that wouldn't happen with just a general impact at that kind of speed. The only thing that would create that kind of dust cloud is the retro boosters firing at the last moment. So everything about this abort appears to have gone off perfectly, but that is part of the problem. You see, Blue Origin's passengers are not highly trained astronauts, and oftentimes they can be pretty elderly. Can you imagine Bill Shatner suddenly going through eight or nine G's worth of acceleration? It's something that Wally Funk was trained for back in the day, but certainly not this man. And by way of comparison, the space tourists who have gone up on Crew Dragon go through a very extensive training program, which includes includes being subjected to high G-forces in modern jet fighters. This is something that these people have never really gone through. Well, perhaps Wally Funk to some degree. I'm not entirely certain about what sort of recent training she's had, but generally the Blue Origin training program only goes for a few days and doesn't really subject the passengers to the kinds of things that they might be expected to experience. And having gone through a three and a half G acceleration simulator myself to simulate just a normal takeoff, I'm here to tell you that it's not comfortable. It feels like an enormous weight is being placed right on your chest. I can't imagine nine G's worth of acceleration and what that would feel like. I'd say there'd be a high possibility of me blacking out anyway. Now, in his defense, Bill Shatner leads a very active lifestyle. He still rides horses. He exercises regularly. He still seems to be overweight, and it's kind of hard to avoid that when you're 90 years old, but he would be a good candidate and was a good candidate to be a passenger on New Shepard, even under an abort situation. But once again, the guy is 90 years old. The possibility of a heart attack or something else occurring during such an incredibly frightening experience, the whole high G-forces and then plummeting as if you were inside a lift car, having the cable cut. I think I've been in England too long. I'm starting to use their terminology. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, that would be beyond terrifying and also very, very stressful to the body. It's not something that even trained astronauts like to go through. A recent abort in Russia experienced by highly trained astronauts still left them really, really rattled. I can't imagine what this would put ordinary people through, especially the elderly. And once again, this is why Blue Origin got so damn lucky. By pure coincidence, there was nobody in the capsule. There were over 70 experiments, some of which may have been damaged, but and none of them obviously got an opportunity to be carried out, so there was money lost opportunity lost, but none of that is nearly as big of a deal as the kind of post-launch experiences that would have been shared by the people who are on the capsule. Now, granted, people who go up on these things are prepared for this sort of thing. At least they like to think that they are, and I respect that. They're prepared to face the possibility of death, and certainly if something happened to them, they would have been the last people to complain if they'd had an opportunity to do so, but that doesn't mean that their relatives wouldn't have gotten upset about it. I have little doubt that if something like that were to occur, at least one upset relative would have been happy to appear on a media show with a personality who's really good at looking astonished and sad and everything in order to get ratings and in order to share their story about how Jeff Bezos killed their grandpa or something along those lines. And these are the sorts of things that Blue Origin really can't afford to go through right now. It costs a great deal of money for somebody to go up on one of these capsules and at a time when Blue Origin is under so much fire and so much attack for the problems that they've been having with
with BE4, the reliability of the New Shepard program was really their big shining star, and that now has become a bit tarnished. The FAA is going to undertake a very in-depth investigation, and it's possible that future passengers might be a little bit more hesitant about shelling out the money necessary to take a ride on one of these things, and also ma major media personalities and celebrities might be a little bit more hesitant as well. But at the same time, I kind of doubt it. Once again, Blue Origin demonstrated that their escape system, their abort system does work. It works very well. And indeed, even if an elderly person were to experience all of that, the odds of them actually dying would probably be pretty low. Once again, we can't say that for certain. Fighter pilots certainly go through those kinds of G-forces all the time, but they wear specially designed G for suits. It's not really a fair comparison to be made there. So we don't have a lot of practical experience as to what happens when you have ordinary people going through these kinds of experiences wearing nothing more than a jumpsuit. All of these things are things that the FAA and Blue Origin are going to have to take into consideration before they let this thing fly again. But let's change gears and talk about something positive about Blue Origin and their partner, Sierra Space. On this channel, you've heard me talk about the LIFE module, which by the way stands for Large Integrated Flexible Environment being developed by Sierra Space for the Orbital Reef Space Station. It's made out of a substance called Vectran, which is supposedly about five times as strong as steel and also provides a great deal of resistance to things like micrometeoroids and even cosmic rays and radiation. When fully inflated, the life module would be about 9 meters in diameter, absolutely colossal compared to conventional space station modules, but at the same time there's still a great deal of hesitation at NASA and elsewhere about inflatable modules. Are they really as strong as everybody says they are? Well, let's blow one up and prove it. Yes, that is indeed what happened at the Johnson Space Center in July. There are warnings given to nearby communities that they might hear a big bang, although they really didn't tell everybody what it was about. They took a one-third scale life module made out of Vectran and exposed it to a tremendous amount of pressure. The original goal was 160 pounds per square inch, which is about the same as you would get about 350 feet beneath the ocean or 110 meters, but they achieved a hell of a lot more than that all the way up to 192 pounds per square inch or the equivalent of going 125 meters beneath the surface of the ocean. That is an enormous amount of pressure. And why did they do this? Because after all, traditional space station modules don't have to go through anything like this. About one-sixth the amount of pressure that's go it's going to be subjected to simply because of the difference between the atmosphere inside the module and the vacuum of space outside. Well, they did it in order to prove the structural strength and stability of the module. It was a colossal success, and the engineers and developers behind the life habitat were understandably enthusiastic about the results because this is a huge step forward, a tremendous proof of concept indicating that these modules will be more than capable of handling the rigors of outer space, which means the next step is full-scale modules to be deployed in outer space, which is going to be happening in the next few years. The objective for Sierra Space is 2026 or 2027 to start deploying these modules as part of Orbital Reef that they're constructing in conjunction with Blue Origin. And not only do they have the technology, they have the money as well. 
NASA has already anointed this station as being the replacement for the ISS, a commercial replacement, and granted Sierra Space over $100 million, well, to Blue Origin as well. And not only that, Sierra Space has raised over a billion dollars from private investors too. And they have contracts with the U.S. military for Dream Chaser, an enormous amount of investment, an enormous amount of confidence in this company and in their their new technology and also keep in mind that these modules can be deployed on any rocket that has a five meter fairing or larger which means it can be deployed by Vulcan it can be deployed by Ariane 6 it can be deployed by a wide variety of different rockets maybe Starship as well but at the same time Sierra Space has made it very clear that they intend to start competing very vigorously against SpaceX so I have have a feeling that there may not be a tremendous amount of collaboration there, but at the same time, they also made it very clear that Crew Dragon is welcome to dock with their station just as much as any other spacecraft. So hopefully there'll be some collaboration there in the future, but regardless of what happens, it is very promising to see just how effective this material is and how viable it's going to be in space. We're no longer going to have of these extremely restrictive modules, these tiny tin cans that astronauts have to fly around in. Now they can ride in these enormous and spacious modules, which are just much, much better, not only for living space, but also just psychologically to have this much room, this much volume to operate in, as opposed to operating inside a tiny restricted space for months on end end. And by the way, this is not the only application for the Life module. They also have versions to be used on the moon as inflatable moon bases that again can be deployed by very small spacecraft. You don't need gigantic spacecraft in order to deploy a large amount of volume. Now, Bigelow Aerospace was the company that originally had the vision for this sort of thing, but Sierra Space is the one seeing it through to its conclusion after Bigelow's demise. I am very, very excited about what is coming from Sierra Space and what Orbital Reef is going to mean for mankind's future, not only in low Earth orbit, but beyond. So yes, New Shepard may have had a hiccup yesterday, but in the grand scheme of things, it's a very minor hiccup compared to the grandiose plans that Sierra Space and Blue Origin have together. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, please also hit that notification bell button, and also check the description for various ways to support my content, and as always, stay angry about space!